Let's add camera effects to the first person controller. In this episode, we're going to work with the camera effects. There are three camera effects that we will add to the player controller. The fuel popping effect when moving on the ground, the change in the field of view of the camera when falling, and the free fall camera shake effect. Let's open up our player controller script. I'll make a new section called camera effects. Here let's define two base variables. The first one is a float called the base camera FOV. I'll give it a default value of 60. This is the base camera field of view. The second variable is also a float called the base camera height and I'll give it a value of 0.85. Now let's work on the first effect, the view popping. View popping makes the movements more realistic. In the camera effect section, I'll add four new float variables. The first one is called walk popping rate and it will have a default value of 0.75. The second one is called the run popping rate. It will have a default value of 1. The third one is called the max walk popping offset. It has a default value of 0.2. And the last one is called the max run popping offset and I'll give it a value of 0.3. Now we've defined the variables for the bobbing effect. Let's go to the update function. And at the end of the function, I'll write if input.getAxis vertical does not equal to zero or input.getAxis horizontal does not equal to zero. So these two statements checks whether the player is pressing the movement controls. And we also need to check if the player is grounded. If this statement is true, we will first define a float variable called bobbing rate. And if input.get key keycode.left shift, so if the left shift button is pressed, if it is true, then it will be the run bobbing rate. Otherwise, it will be the walk bobbing rate. And the second variable we will define is called the bobbing offset. This is basically the same as the bobbing rate. So if input.get key keycode.left shift is true then it will be the max run bobbing offset otherwise it will be the max walk bobbing offset we will now define a new vector 3 variable called the target head position and it will equal to vector3.up times base camera height plus Vector3.up times mathf.pingpong time.time .time times bobbing rate. And the second argument will be the bobbing offset. And at the end, I'll subtract bobbing offset multiplied by 0.5. And finally, I'll apply the target head position to the local position of the head transform. 
using the vector3.larp function. So the local position of the hat is equal to vector3.larp hat.local position target hat position and 0 0.1. The mathf.pingpong function larps between 0 and a given value. For example, if I pass 1 to the ping pong function, it will larp from 0 to 1 and back to 0 and then 1 and 0. After a bit of research, the reason we use time.time .time here is because the graph of the ping pong function relies on the time component. So we make use of the time.time .time property and we will get the value at a specific time. And since the value returned by the ping pong function may be different at different timestamps, that is why we use the vector3.lerp function to smoothen the difference between the current hat position and the target hat position. Let's save the script and go back to the editor. Let's now run the game. And you can see the player's hat is bobbing right now. If I press shift, the bobbing effect is more significant. Now let's work on a second effect, which is the field of view when falling. We will go to the late update method. At the end of the method, we will work on the FOV. Here we will define a new variable called FOV offset. And if the velocity of the rigid body in the Y axis is smaller than zero, then it will be mathf.square root, mathf.absolute, rigidbody.velocity.y otherwise it will be 0. So here we are taking the velocity in a y direction and since this may be negative we want it to be always positive so we make use of the absolute function and then we take the square root of the value. Below this line we will do camera.fieldofView is equal to mathf.lerp camera.fieldofView base camera fov plus fov offset 0 0.25 so this lerps between the current field of view of the camera to the newly calculated field of view let's save the script and go back to the editor as you can see, I've added a building in the scene, so we can test the falling effects. When you try to jump off the building, you'll see the FOV is changing, it is increased. And once we hit the ground, the FOV returns to the original value. And now let's work on the third camera effect, which is the camera shake when free falling. The camera shake significantly enhances the falling experience. We will define another four variables. The first one is a float called camera shake threshold and I'll give it a default value of 10. And the second one, I'll make use of the range attribute and I'll limit the value between 0 and 0 0.3. And this one is also a float called camera shake rate and it has a default value of 0 0.015. The third variable it's called max vertical fall shake angle and I'll give it a value of 40 and let's copy this line and change the name to horizontal 
what we are doing here is if the player is falling and the player's velocity exceeds the camera shake threshold, it will trigger the camera shake. To achieve the camera shake effect, we will make the camera rotate vertically and horizontally by using the random function multiplied by the shake angles. The camera shake rate controls how fast and how rapidly the camera will shake. Let's go to the late update method and below the FOV we will work on the fall effect. Here I will check for if the player is not grounded and the absolute value of the player's velocity in the y direction is greater than or equal to the camera shake threshold. Then we will define a new vector 3 value called new angle which is equal to the head.local Euler angles. And then we will add a vector 3 dot right vector, multiply it by random dot range, which is a random value between the negative max vertical fall shake angle and a positive max vertical fall shake angle. And then we will add an other vector, which is vector 3 dot up times random dot range which gives a random value between negative max horizontal fall shake angle and positive max horizontal fall shake angle. After that we will simply set the head dot local Euler angles to vector 3 dot lerp head dot local Euler angles and new angle. For the last argument I will pass the camera shake rate. If the conditions are not met, we will make use of the E vector that we've defined above. We'll first set it to head dot local oil angles and then we will set the Y component equals to zero and apply it back to the local oil angles. Let's save script and go back to the editor. And now when we jump off the building, the camera shakes. By modifying the values in the inspector, we will be able to achieve different camera effects. So this time we've completed the field of view change, the view bobbing, and the camera shake effect. In the next episode, we will work on the sounds. I'm Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned!